welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about digoxin toxicity and one uh, important plant poison that is related to digoxin toxicity, that is cerebra odolum poison. Digoxin is a drug which is used in cardiac failure. Nowadays, the use is limited to cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation. That is because of its uh, uh, toxicity. It has two important action. One is it increases the uh, calcium content in the cardiac cells and it increases the force of contraction in the cardiac muscles. So, the, uh, the slowly once you start digoxin, you can see that patient who is having cardiac failure, slowly their ejection fraction improves. But uh, uh, unfortunately, this drug can produce a lot of arrhythmias. That is why the use is now restricted to atrial fibrillation with cardiac failure and uh, rate uh, it decreases that the, the drug can decrease the rate that is why it is very useful in tachyarrhythmias but nowadays the use again it is restricted to cardiac failure with uh, atrial fibrillation with uh, rapid ventricular rate. Uh, so these two actions positive inotropic action AV node inhibition, inhibition action that both are very useful in cardiac failure with tachyarrhythmias that is why nowadays it is mainly indicated in cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation. This drug is indicated now in cardiac failure with uh, atrial fibrillation. Previously, it, were, it was used in various uh, cardiac failures. Nowadays, the use is restricted to cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation. That is only because of the adverse effects this drug can produce. That is why the use is limited to most important condition like cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation. The dose is 0 0.125 to 0.25 milligram once daily and 5 days in a week that is enough uh, most of the drugs we give every day but digoxin as such uh, given in 5 days in a week and in renal failure the dose has to be admitted, uh, uh, dose has to be reduced uh, adjusted according to creatine clearance and uh, uh, after 5 days 2 days uh, drug holiday has to be given uh, so that the uh, receptors will become normal. Digoxin toxicity can occur in patients who is having overdose. Normally, overdose does not occur uh, because we advise the patient to take 5 days in a week and uh, patient follow that. But unfortunately, patients who is having renal failure, many patients with, uh, with uh, diabetes, cardiac failure, atrial fibrillation, they can have renal failure also. So, in renal failure, the clearance will be reduced so that uh, digoxin levels in blood can be increased. And uh, it can lead to anorexia, nausea, vomiting, neurological symptoms, all these things. So, any patients who, who, is, uh, who is on digoxin admitted to emergency room with severe vomiting and uh, nausea, you have to think about uh, digoxin induced arrhythmias. It can produce most of the arrhythmias uh, except uh, uh, atrial tachycardias with vat uh, rapid ventricular rate. Because atrial tachycardias are common, but atrial tachycardia with Rapid ventricular rate is not common in digoxin. All other uh, arrhythmias are common in digoxin. So, digoxin is an antiarrhythmic drug. Same time, it is also a proarrhythmic drug. That means, it is used in tachyarrhythmias, control the tachyarrhythmias, but it, it itself can produce lot of uh, arrhythmias. But uh, rapid ventricular rate uh, with, sorry, rapid uh, uh, ventricular rate in a atrial uh, tachyarrhythmia is not very common, but uh, atrial tachyarrhythmia, atrial arrhythmias with uh, controlled ventricular rate or reduced ventricular rate is also common. Now, you can see the risk factors for digoxin toxicity, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypercalcemia uh, and other drugs along with uh, digoxin like quinidine, verapamil, amadrone, all these things can in increase the risk of uh, digoxin toxicity. Symptoms of digoxin toxicity, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, increased sleepiness, uh, muscle weakness, diarrhea, yellow vision, all these things are the uh, major adverse effects of uh, digoxin toxicity. So, any patient who is on digoxin, especially when the, uh, when the patient is having renal failure, if the patient come, come with severe nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, think about digoxin toxicity. And other uh, findings like um, uh, hypotension and bradycardia is also common in digoxin toxicity. Now, once you get a, a suspicion of uh, digoxin toxicity, always take an ECG. Almost all arrhythmias including bigeminy, trigeminy uh, or uh, 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 paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, all these things are common. 
but uh, uh, paroxysmal atrial rhythm is common but tachycardia as such may not occur pa uh, paroxysmal atrial rhythm with uh, controlled heart rate will be the common adverse effects so hyperkalemia can occur in many patients with digox toxicity so we have to check the serum potassium and magnesium hyperkalemia is a marker of acute uh, cardiac like i said or digox toxicity and it is a predictor of mortality in this type of patients and uh, uh, other than that patient also can have other electrolyte imbalances like um, hypokalemia so both hyperkalemia and hypokalemia can occur in digox toxicity hypomagnesemia hypercalcemia all these things are uh, commonly seen all patients who is having digox toxicity we have to check the creatinine level because we already discussed that digoxin toxicity uh, it is uh, unfortunately the incidence is very very common in patients who is having renal failure without uh, dose adjustment so if a patient is having renal failure elevated creatinine and unfortunately the uh, uh, dose was not adjusted by the doctor then the patient can go to digoxin toxicity so we have to be very careful so creatinine has to be checked digoxin level more than 2.5 nanogram per ml can uh, uh, have toxic features uh, in many patients so the uh, problem with digoxin is its very narrow therapeutic index the narrow therapeutic index means if it is below the therapeutic index the action will be less if it is above the therapeutic index patient can have uh, abnormal problems like arrhythmias and all so ecg may show uh, any types of dysarrhythmias bradycardias premature ventricular complexes bigeminy uh, paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with cardiac block atrial fibrillation with controlled heart rate and uh, regular qrs complexes nodal rhythm ventricular tachycardia tvo inversion pr interval increase but there is something called as digoxin effect that is not the sign of digoxin toxicity what you are seeing in this ecg is reverse tick sign of uh, digoxin effect scoped out st depression or reverse tick sign uh, so uh, this is not a toxicity toxicity sign of digoxin it is only a, uh, a sign of digoxin effect it's called as digoxin effect so that is not a sign of digoxin toxicity so there are lot of uh, arrhythmias which can be produced uh, uh, by uh, digoxin toxicity uh, but remember uh, whatever we, we are uh, reading out here in this slide Uh, unfortunately that all these things can have a problem that is uh, controlled ventricular rate even atrial flutter atrial fibrillation paroxysmal atrial tachycardia whatever is written here most of the time you can get uh, severe bradyarrhythmia so all abnormalities will be there in ecg whether you can get uh, bigeminy trigeminy multiple ectopics paroxysmal atrial rhythm atrial fibrillation atrial flutter uh, so many things can happen but bradycardia with conduction blocks are very very important so uh, normally paroxysmal tachycardia means you get a increased heart rate with multiple morphology p waves but here uh, paroxysmal atrial rhythm can occur but most of these patients can have uh, controlled ventricular rate now what you are seeing in this ecg is sawtooth appearance in the baseline you can see the Uh, baseline is not uh, very straight it is it is a sign of atrial flutter and uh, some patients can have atrial fibrillation also but what you are seeing here is qrs complexes coming very regularly so that indicates there is some amount of block is there whether it is uh, uh, high de- high grade second degree heart block or uh, uh, third degree heart block here it is uh, complete heart block with uh, atrial flutter so atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation where the ventricular rate is very very low and the qrs complex are coming regularly then you have to think about atrial fibrillation or flutter with complete heart block if uh, rate is low and uh, still the qrs complex are irregular then it is only bradycardia and it is a controlled ventricular rate if the qrs complex are coming coming regularly like this then you have to always suspect about uh, uh, third degree heart block along with atrial fl- flutter or fibrillation the uh, top ecg shows bigeminy you can see alternate qrs complex are wide bizarre complexes but uh, the lower uh, this one uh, you can get paroxysmal atrial tachycardia but here tachycardia e- e- actual tachycardia may not be there 
but uh, there are multiple VPCs. So, paroxysmal atrial rhythm with uh, multiple VPCs in a patient who is taking digoxin may be a sign of digoxin toxicity. So, remember almost all types of arrhythmias are common in uh, digoxin toxicity except um, uh, para, uh, atrial, ta, atrial rhythm with tachycardia. Most of the time atrial rhythm with bradycardia is common. Now, how to manage this type of cases, uh, uh, whether you have uh, digoxin toxicity or odalum, uh, to odalum poisoning, always take care airway, breathing, circulation in this patient. Stabilization of the patient is very, very important because patient can have pulmonary edema, patient can have bradycardia, severe bradycardia. So, according to ACLS protocol, we have to stabilize the airway, breathing, circulation, all these things and put two large bore IV cannulas because any time patient can go to uh, bradycardia, hypotension, shock, all these things. Uh, stop digoxin, whether you get the digoxin level or not, immediately stop the digoxin because uh, if especially patients who is having renal failure or uh, uh, electrolyte imbalance, then we can give activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is used in many uh, drugs. It is especially useful in patients with uh, overdose. You know, like overdose means patient, suppose the patient have taken uh, 5 or 6 tablet together uh, in a patient already on uh, digoxinization already the patient had developed uh, digoxinization and the patient had taken some more tablets on digoxin so we can give uh, activated charcoal but chronic toxicity digoxin uh, toxicity uh, activated charcoal may not be very useful acute toxicity uh, with overdose you can give uh, activated charcoal 1 gram per kg can be given then correct the electrolyte imbalance that is very important hypokalemia hypomagnesemia has to be corrected mm, uh, uh, but many patients can have hyperkalemia also you know that hyperkalemia the most important treatment is calcium gluconate many literature says that calcium gluconate in digoxin toxicity may be dangerous but recent evidences does not uh, uh, does not support that even in hyperkalemia with uh, severe problem because of hyperkalemia you can treat the patient with calcium gluconate without any major adverse effect. That, so, that is a major difference between the previous guidelines and current guideline. Now, many patients who is having renal failure, maybe it may be due to a pre-renal failure because of severe vomiting and abdominal uh, problem. So, you have to correct the fluids, increase the kidney function so that uh, digoxin can be uh, removed through the urine. Avoid potential harmful intervention like calcium gluconate was the previous guideline. But nowadays, uh, previously it was uh, most of the guideline says that you should avoid calcium gluconate. But nowadays we know that uh, calcium gluconate in an emergency condition like hyperkalemia induced uh, cardiac arrhythmia, even if the patient is on digoxin, you can safely give calcium gluconate. And catecholamines like uh, noradrenaline, adrenaline can be given. Uh, in patient with severe bradycardia or hypotension. Lignocaine can be used in uh, severe uh, ventricular arrhythmias. Atropine can be used in severe bradyarrhythmias. And electrical cardioversion is uh, very safe if the digoxin level is less than 2 nanogram per liter. So, electrical cardioversion can be tried in uh, various type of uh, uh, supraventricular arrhythmias or uh, uh, defibrillation can be given in ventricular uh, type of arrhythmias. Uh, energy needed may be 10 to 20 joules and increase to 10 to 20 joules increment. So, there is a slight uh, difference between normal uh, cardiac shock and digoxin induced cardiac shock. Uh, resuscitation efforts should be tried uh, uh, for a long time in digoxin toxicity. Now, there are two important uh, antidotes for digoxin toxicity, Digifab and Digibind. Digifab is preferable over Digibind. Mechanism of action, it binds free digoxin and complexes are uh, renally excreted. But if the patient is not having renal failure, then you will have to go for dialysis. Indications, chronic digoxin toxicity, dysarrhythmia, serum potassium more than 5.5 low GCS, acute digoxin ingestion more than 10 mg in adults and for more than 4 mg in children. Dosing 1 vial 40 mg binds to 0.5 mg of digoxin. Acute toxicity, we will have to give 5 to 10 vials. That is very important. Remember, 5 to 10 vials may be required for these patients. Now, what are the things you should do in digoxin, digoxin toxicity? 
So, you can uh, 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 give uh, digoxin antidots, uh, always uh, give 10 to uh, 10 vials and uh, 5 vials in pediatrics. Calcium, calcium can be given in case of hyperkalemia. It is not harmful in patients who is having hyperkalemia, like previous guidelines uh, may tell that it, it should be avoided, but current uh, guidelines and evidence shows that it can be given. Potassium lowering agents, we should be very careful. Uh, hypokalemia can produce aggravation of uh, problem in digoxin toxicity. Unstable tachyarrhythmias, electrical cardioversion can be tried according to ACLS protocol. Now, one uh, uh, plant poison which may resemble like digoxin toxicity, that is cerebral odalum or suicide tree, it is very common in our country. So, the treatment clinical findings, everything will be similar to digoxin. So, that uh, the, uh, the uh, content in this uh, uh, plant poison uh, will be same like digoxin and it can produce increased automaticity, increased vagal tone and hyperkalemia. So, all features will be similar to digoxin. So, I am go not going to the details of this drug. Management is also similar to digoxin uh, toxicity management. So, we have discussed about one of the important, uh, uh, important uh, toxicity or a chronic poisoning or chronic uh, overdose or acute overdose uh, uh, which is produced by digoxin. Digoxin is a very useful drug in cardiac failure, especially in cardiac failure with uh, atrial fibrillation. But the problem in digoxin is that uh, that has got very narrow therapeutic index, especially in patients who is having renal failure. Many patients on digoxin who come to emergency room with severe vomiting, abdomen pain, nausea, and on examination, you can see some electrolyte imbalance like hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, hypercalcemia. Whatever electrolyte imbalance is uh, there in the patient, we have to correct that. That is very important. And uh, most of the time, correction of the electrolyte imbalance itself will correct most of the problems. But uh, some patients may require uh, digoxin antidotes like digoxin antibodies and some patients may require dialysis also. Thank you.